Rule number 13, uh, we're given the function y equals the quantity x plus uh, the square root of x raised to the second power. And it says to ensure your answer, use the n derive on your calculator. So we're supposed to find dy dx. Now if I do all that u, du, all that stuff, really what I'm saying is, is I'm going to take the derivative of this stuff on the outside first. What do I do with the negative 2? Toss it to the front. Everything on the inside remains the same, x minus, or I'm sorry, plus the square root of x. Now, this becomes what? Negative 3. Negative 3. Now I have to tack on the derivative of the stuff on the inside. What is the derivative of x? 1. What is the derivative of the square root of x? Remember that the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. So if I take the derivative of this, it's going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Now it doesn't give us a number or anything to verify this. So how would I use endor to or n derive to uh, figure out the answer? Because that is the right answer. I could plug in a value for x and then see what it is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, is it easier to do? Let me ask you a question. Mr. Adams has been doing this a long time. I could do it in my head. Do you? Is it easier for you guys to write out the du, dux, and all that stuff, or can? Do you, are you ready to skip that step and just remember? Um, Let, let's go over it one more time oh, so you yeah, see what I did. Yeah. To take the derivative of this stuff, I do the outside derivative first, and then I have to remember to take the derivative of the stuff on the inside. So this is really something raised to the negative two. So then I toss the negative two to the front, leave my something alone and then raise that to the negative 3 because that's how you would normally take the derivative. In other words, what Mr. Adams is thinking in this head is that this is u, right, to the negative 2. And so the derivative of that, du dx, is equal to negative 2 u to the negative 3. Yeah. That's okay. It doesn't matter because we've already done the thing. So... So now that I've taken the derivative of that, I still have to take the derivative of u. So then the derivative of u is just the stuff on the inside. And so when I take the derivative of u and tack that on to the back end of it, that's what I'll get. Actually, this is dy du, right? I wrote this down wrong. This is dy, dy du, and then I'd have to take the derivative of u with respect to x. So I take the derivative of this with respect to x. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Adams. Yes. 